when I did find out, it was this evil creep of a man that wanted nothing to do with me. This is the story of Donald Klein. He was found to be the biological father of 94 children and counting. My name is Jason Hyatt. I am sibling 48. I uh, found out a few years ago that I am the offspring of Dr. Klein. I think there's 96 of us. Donald Klein was born and raised in Indianapolis, Indiana. He attended college at Indiana University and continued on to get his MD at the Indiana University School of Medicine. When Donald was 24, he was driving a car when a four-year-old girl ran out into the street. Donald didn't see her and his car struck and killed her. It is said that after the accident, Donald became a deeply religious man. In 1979, Donald opened his practice. He specialized in reproductive endocrinology and infertility, and he had quickly become a renowned fertility expert in Indiana. One former patient said, his office was decorated with photos of babies he'd helped conceive, a mundane detail that seems unsettling in retrospect. His patients were all told that they were being given a donor sperm. He claimed to be using sperm from medical residents, and he assured the families he was treating that the sperm of each donor would only be used for a maximum of three successful pregnancies. Patients would select from a notebook that Dr. Klein had in his office, and they would pick what criteria they wanted their donor to have. A nurse that worked at Dr. Klein's office, Jan Shore, said that the hospital was just across the street. She said that she would go to the hospital to receive the specimen, and because it had to be kept warm or body temperature, she would bring it back to the office in her bra. So even though the doctor was doing so much good by helping all of these women and couples have babies and create families, he also had a way of making them feel shame. He told his patients that they should never tell their children that they weren't conceived naturally. He forced this notion onto all of his patients. In the 70s and 80s, this procedure was considered taboo, so Donald really leaned into those taboos so that he could really get his patients to listen. Again, why wouldn't you trust this man? He's your wonderful doctor that has helped you obtain your dream. I think it's important to note that Donald's religious beliefs trickled into his practice quite a bit. He was having his staff recite prayers together. He advised his patients to pray on their treatment choices and he decorated his office with Christian sayings. And he had affinity for the verse Jeremiah 1.5, before I formed you in your mother's womb, I knew you. While Donald has never confirmed this, it is said that he was a part of an extremist Christian sect called Quiverful, which often uses Jeremiah 1.5 in their materials. And the reason this connection is most important is that Quiverful encourages followers to reproduce as prolifically as possible to meet God's mandate to be fruitful and multiply and to install its followers into positions of power. Let's fast forward to 2014. A woman by the name of Jacoba Ballard had received an at-home DNA test. You know, 23andMe or Ancestry, very popular for gifts and for anyone trying to learn a little bit more about their ancestors. Jacoba had found out at age 10 that she was conceived by a sperm donor. She knew there was something different since she was blue-eyed with blonde hair and olive skin and both her parents didn't share those same features. By 1998, before there was commercial testing, Jacoba had become interested in the possibility of half-siblings. All she knew at this point was that the doctor who had helped her parents was Dr. Donald Klein. She called Dr. Klein's office, looking to get some information about the donor so that she could find the familial connection that she'd been looking for. Donald answered the phone, and when Jacoba started telling him about how she wanted to find half-siblings and asking him if there was any sort of donor number, or if he could access her mom's medical files and give her any sort of info that would lead to more family, he very matter-of-factly told her that she could not have that information and that all of her mother's records had been destroyed. Super sus. She hung up and went on with her life. But then, in 2014, when Jacoba's results came back from her 23andMe test, she discovered a biological connection to seven previously unknown half-siblings. Jacoba reached out to her newfound family members. After researching their shared connection and who their sperm donor might be, they soon discovered with absolute horror what their parents' trusted doctor had done. Jacoba and her new siblings had continued to look for relatives on Ancestry.com that would link them. When all of the connecting links brought them to Dr. Klein, 
Dr. Klein was their biological father, all seven of them. When I found out who he was, when I found out what he did, I immediately just went into being like, oh my God, this guy went into a room and did his business. The worst part about it to me, thinking my mom in this situation of this guy came in and examined her, right? So he was touching her, getting aroused, then got up and did his business and came back and put his semen in. I hung up the phone, I sat down, immediately threw up everything from the past and my father and just like it was just like it solidified it even if my mom told me that it was a chance that my dad not being my dad it's still not as in your face it's a piece of paper saying he is not right so like it just solidified everything that i had been thinking that that i grew up with jacoba didn't know exactly what to do but a google search brought her to the state attorney general's website and she decided to file a complaint against dr donald the response from the attorney general was a generic one just stating that they received the complaint and they would be looking into it jacoba decided to reach out to the press she reached out to every news outlet and the only reporter to respond was a woman named angela ganote Angela couldn't understand why no one had picked up the story because it was backed by so much truth. And so she too began to investigate and reached out herself to Donald Klein. Of course, he denied the story, telling her the same thing that he had told all his patients. He only used sperm from doctors in training and there was no way possible that each person would have more than three siblings. But Donald Klein wouldn't take a DNA test of his own to clear his name or even to help these children of his patients that had so many questions. Without Donald's DNA test and without any help from the state, Jacoba and her siblings couldn't really do anything to move forward. When Angela did report on the story, she wasn't allowed to identify Donald by name. But the seven siblings decided to reach out to every male in Donald's family asking if there was anyone that had donated their specimen. It took about two weeks to receive a response but eventually, Donald's son, Doug, did respond, and Jacoba met Donald's two children at her church. She knew going into the meeting that these were big accusations, and she didn't know them. So she picked her church because it was a place that she said she felt more comfortable meeting them. Doug told her that they had spoken to their dad, and he did admit that he was the biological father of these seven siblings. He said he only used his sperm when he didn't have access to a donor. He also said that as far as siblings go, there were no more than 10. Doug assured Jacoba that he would do whatever it took to get her the answers that she desired. So she told him that what she and all her siblings wanted was to meet Dr. Klein. Dr. Klein agreed. By this point, there were 14 siblings. When they met Donald, the questions that they asked were about health, um, such as do we need to worry about any sort of medical history because Multiple siblings were suffering from the same autoimmune disease. They also asked him point blank why he had done what he'd done. His children said that Donald responded by saying that his reason for doing it was to help their mothers that were so desperate to have a child. And he was just doing what he could to help. The other thing that Donald told his children was that there was absolutely wouldn't be more than 15 siblings. Hmm, heard that one before. No more than seven, no more than 10. No more than 15, when will it stop? The fact that the number keeps growing is scary. The possibility of consanguinity, people marrying their brother or sister, it's just getting more and more probable. For me, the worst, I think the worst part is I spent two years building up this med student that could be my father. You know what I mean? So I was like, okay, this kid came in at 18, 19. He was a med student. He needed a little bit of extra cash, so he donated. I get it. So I built up this thing of, okay, maybe I can knock on a door one day and, you know, say, hey, you know, you remember doing this? I think that's the worst part is when I did find out it was this evil creep of a man that wanted nothing to do with me. When I found out, I think I was 28 years old at the time, 29, I had just started a new job being a Medicaid executive for a wellness group. And I had hired a couple girls um, and one of the girls brought her kit in and was like, hey, I'm about to do this. And so she convinced me to do it. 
I didn't really know. I didn't really tell her the situation beforehand. She said, you know, you'll get 13 hints, 13, 15 hints right at the, you know, the beginning and you'll be able to, you know, figure your lineage. Well, I finally did it. And then when I opened it up, it had like 3,133 hints. So she was like, oh, this isn't, this isn't real. And I was like, well, it might be because I think I'm a donor. And she was like, well, still donors can only, you know, give their sample out a few times. I think it was Jacoba. She was like, hey, look, this is real. I need you to, you know, call me back when, when you're ready. I went down a dark path. I went down a dark, dark path drinking and I ended up trying to commit. So this was the path that I went down when I found out um, that my father was Dr. Klein. I don't know if I'm ever going to be able to be comfortable looking in a mirror anymore. It's really me. I don't want to have children. And I've always wanted to be a father. And it's, it's like a rock and a hard place. So he's ruined my life. With all the time passing and new siblings popping up regularly, there was still no answer from the attorney general and the complaint that Jacoba had made. Angela Gnot and the news channel she worked with kept contacting Dr. Klein for questions and he wouldn't comply or answer any. In fact, he ended up calling Jacoba to tell her that she was wrong to have told her story to the news outlet that the world knowing what he had done was hurting his marriage and would affect his church. So not only no remorse, but now he's blaming her for his own actions? I can't with this guy. More and more siblings continue to appear on DNA testing sites. And the newest revelation is that not all siblings were supposed to even be from donor sperm. Couples who had gone to the doctor together, thinking that their child was biologically both of theirs for all of that time, and then discovering that Dr. Klein had actually used his own. Dr. Klein finally agreed to meet with Angela, the reporter. In his meeting, he says to her what he's said to Jacoba. Channel 59 can't air his story. It will affect his marriage and his church. He also mentioned to Angela that he had corresponded with the attorney general. A letter had previously gone to Dr. Klein asking about the complaint. And in the letter back, Donald denied any wrongdoing and insisted that he was not the father. And this was the key information that Jacoba, her siblings, and their legal team were able to use to finally pursue legal action. Did you know that there's really no law saying that this is malpractice? And until this point, the only thing that they could use to press charges was this lie that he had told the attorney general. Okay, that has my jaw on the floor. Almost two years after Jacoba had reached out to Angela and after all of the investigating that they had done, Dr. Klein was charged with two felony counts of obstruction of justice for statements that he made to his investigators. After this, police were able to get Dr. Klein to take a DNA test. When the results came back, they showed a 99.9997% chance that Dr. Klein was the children's biological father. Dr. Klein pleaded guilty. Though the crime feels so much bigger than just lying to investigators, Dr. Klein pleaded with the judge to show mercy and countless letters were sent on Dr. Klein's behalf asking for leniency in his sentencing. The obstruction of justice charges meant that no evidence related to Klein's actions toward his former patients was admissible, even though those actions were what the siblings and their parents were truly seeking restitution for. Dr. Klein received two suspended sentences, meaning he served no jail time and only had to pay a $500 fine. In 2018, the fertility fraud law was passed. Thanks to the siblings and led by Matt White and his mother Liz White, they were able to establish a cause of action if fertility fraud were to occur. Well, this is not a federal law yet, more states are passing it. DNA tests have proven Dr. Klein to be the father of 94 children and counting. It's definitely majorly divided. Half of us right now um, want the world to know and got our way. And then the, there's the other half are, you know, leave them alone. You need to be grateful that you're on this planet because of him. And it's baffling. They think we want to get spotlight when we deep down have him ha be held accountable. As of May 2022, Klein had paid out more than $1.35 million to settle three civil lawsuits filed by donors, children, and families. And that's the wild story of Dr. Klein. How infuriated are you?
scale of one to 10. Do you think he deserved a stronger sentencing? Or is it easy to forgive him because of the fact that he was able to provide children for so many families? Let us know in the comments. Thanks so much for watching, y'all. I'm Lindsay, and I'll see you next time on Killer Bites.